Okay, now we're gonna get started with all of the meat of what is happening here. And I think we're probably gonna start with Adobe Portfolio. Wonderful. So Dr. Nate, can you tell us a little bit about what it is? What is Adobe Portfolio? Yeah, Adobe Portfolio is a application from Adobe that allows you to present different types of content. Um, you can create different folders in it. They're called pages, but they look like folders, they hold different content. And we can use it from a pedagogical standpoint for students to be able to host and aggregate different type of work. Uh, for example, this one right here is a portfolio created in our capstone class. And as you can see, it is a main page that has a menu at the top where you can kind of highlight different areas of work. Uh, for my capstone class, I have them highlight all of the different projects they did, and then it has another option that they created for them to show work that they've created in other classes, and then a contact form here, because this is a live website, people can access it um, online, and then they can contact the student if they want more information about the work that they have done. So it's a pretty cool little space to, to have students have a tangible collection of all of their work. That way they can use it for the purpose of passing the class, but also as a artifact that they can show potential employers, uh, they can show potential internship coordinators, or if they're going to grad school and they're trying to get into a media program or a program where they're creating different types of, um, of content, this will be something that they can submit as an example of their work. That's awesome. And I'm going to go ahead and throw in the chat um, some examples and templates from Adobe Portfolio that you can also take a look at. Um, so that's great, Dr. Nate. So you talked a little bit about the purpose of it. Um, anything else that you'd like to add in terms of how you integrate it into your class? Yeah, so um, one of the great things about the Adobe Creative Cloud we have here at San Diego State University, Adobe Creative Cloud Professional, is the ability for synergy amongst all the different applications. And so I'll show you right here what my Canvas uh, page looks like for that particular course. This is a capstone for media studies. And what I've done is I've kind of scaffolded the different applications, sort of kind of like the gateway application that then builds upon uh, itself to provide students with kind of uh, the necessary skills and familiarity with the interface of Adobe to kind of go to more complex types of applications. So here you'll see that my students will first learn Behance and then Portfolio. One of the reasons why I put Behance first is because you can actually integrate your Behance content into Adobe Portfolio. Um, and that just automatically comes over whenever you log in and enter your information. So I want to show them that there's that synergy between the applications. And then after portfolio, they learn Spark, they learn um, Audition, they learn how to use InDesign, they learn how to use um, XD at some point, and then they present their portfolios to the class. And so for the particular portfolio assignment, I have them do this after the Behance project because the Behance um, kind of is a low stakes assignment. It gives them the ability to become familiar with the interface, as I mentioned before. Um, and then when I have them create the portfolio, this is at the very beginning of class. They basically just follow a workshop checklist that I have um, uh, modified from other different uh, Adobe gurus that I've learned from uh, over the past couple of, of years. And all they do is just go step by step to create their Adobe portfolio. And so this right here is what that checklist looks like. And they're able to follow this on their own. I usually run through the class uh, in ways or structure the class in ways where one week they have a practice. And this right here is one of those such practices. And then the second week, they actually um, use their own content and do what they want to create that particular application project. So for example, um, when we do Spark, they will have a Spark uh, pro practice, and then they will do an actual social media influencer project with Spark. When we do Audition, they do a practice with Audition first, and then they create some sort of first episode of a podcast and use Audition to edit it. So there's always that kind of um, make sure they, they are familiar with the um, user interface of that particular Adobe application. They get to practice it, and then they get to apply critical thinking and the different content from media studies to that particular Adobe application. So the whole class isn't just how do you use Adobe, it's how can Adobe help you communicate the different things that you're learning and trying to present 
in the class. And so this is what they do with the Adobe portfolio. And so as they start to create different types of content throughout the semester, they then have these little folders, which are also known as pages in Adobe portfolio that they can then go to and host um, their different content that they have created. So for example, this right here is um, the page where they've done the practice project, which is down here on InDesign. And then they've done their actual um, InDesign project where they had to do a critical cultural analysis on a, a TV show, streaming show, or film. And then they use that to host on InDesign. And so when we go back to portfolio at the end of the semester, they have all of this aggregated content in a very nice and clean um, web page that students can then just send the URL to, again, as I mentioned before, potential employers, internship coordinators, um, or grad school. So that's how we use Adobe Portfolio in my particular class. Fantastic, Dr. Nate. And if uh, folks wanted to get resources about how to use a portfolio, uh, what would you suggest? So one of the great things about Adobe and and this isn't just because it's like, oh, Adobe's great. And, you know, there's, there's, I, I think a very deliberate thing that Adobe has done in order to help educators integrate this in their classroom. So you can go to the Adobe Education Exchange. You can also go to the portfolio site itself and it links over to different types of guidebooks. Um, Adobe Portfolio, I mean, Adobe in general has created different guidebooks and help guides and how to's for each of its different applications. So when you go to uh, the portfolio website, you can get all that information as well. The other good thing um, is that you can go to YouTube. I go to YouTube a lot and send my students there. And Adobe Creative Cloud, as well as just Adobe in general, have different YouTube channels where they have different types of tutorials online that walk you through the process, as well as tons of other educators and professionals who have created their own content, uh, training content to be more specific on YouTube that you can then explore there too. So those would be the places I would send people to go to. Great, Dr. Nate. And I'll go ahead and add some of those links in the chat for you all to have in your pocket. So to transition, Dr. Nate, um, let's talk about Spark. Spark, one of my favorite Adobe applications. I feel Spark is one of those kind of gateway applications as well. It's relatively easy to learn for students and for faculty to be able to kind of teach it and navigate it. And it's one of those spaces that is very easily accessible also to the outside world so that students again can present their content uh, to different potential employers or grad school coordinators or whatever that might be. Uh, but it also is a space that students can create not only web pages but videos and social media posts as well. It's kind of an all-in-one type of, of stop for them. Uh, so I, I, I love Adobe Spark. Yes, Team Adobe Spark. Um, <laughs> Dr. Nate, can you tell us a little bit about how you integrate it in your class? How have you um, plans for the future? Yes. Um, so the great thing about Adobe Spark is that we are able to kind of use it to present different types of content. It's a really great alternative to the traditional paper. Um, and it's, it's good for, for two reasons, I think, in that aspect is one, it gives students another outlet to express themselves creatively rather than writing a whole research paper. Um, and second, you as the instructor don't have to read pages and pages and grade it. Um, you still have to grade this content, but I think it pushes students to kind of their creative boundaries where they are still having to do the research. They're still having to create the academic content, but now they're having to apply even more critical thinking skills to present this in a very creative form, which is an Adobe web page. So for me, in this particular class, which is the capstone, students will get one week of learning how to do Adobe, like how to create a web page. And then the second week, they are actually researching and putting together a social media influencer campaign. Um, and that's right here, as you see in the second um, or third actual module. Um, that's right here. And so when they apply the different types of influencer um, criteria that I'm asking them to, they then take the Adobe Spark page and they present it. So this right here is an example of kind of what that project looks like. I give them their deadlines. I then give them kind of the, the bigger um, goal at hand, which is they're creating a web page to 
uh, to pitch themselves basically to Hyper, which is a social media influencer company. It's a matchmaking of sorts. It gets influencers, it gets companies, and then it puts them together. And so I'm asking them to create a, a, a brand. I'm asking them to create objectives for their campaign, uh, match the objectives with their target audience and the potential influencers that could also be similar to them. And then also tell us how they're different uh, from those influencers. I then asked them for, you know, um, a kind of meta sort of why should they choose you type of situation. And then at the end of it, making sure that all of that is presented in a very um, aesthetically pleasing way on their Adobe Spark page. And so this is what that looks like here. Also give them examples of not just other works that students have done, but um, different types of uh, Spark pages that were created by our department here and different departments throughout the university. Um, and so this is what that, um, what this Spark page kind of looks like um, in terms of the end result when students are able to create this as their assignment. So this is uh, one of my students and it talks again um, about everything that I asked them to cover in that particular assignment prompt. Spark lets you put different types of split layouts. It lets you put pictures, different types of text, also buttons that link to different types of content as well. This that she's using by, behind here is called um, a window, uh, which is one of the orientations for pictures. And it kind of looks like as you scroll that that picture is just existing behind this, which I think is a really, really cool look. Um, but as I scroll through this page here, you will see that the students are putting all of the content that I asked them to. They're giving citations and references. So the academic rigor is here. And then they're also able to create different types of content um, creatively and how they present it um, to the, the viewing public, whoever might be looking at their particular web page. And so I think this is a really great alternative to that, um, that essay, which I know some classes need an essay. So this might be if you're in a class where you're assigning essay after essay after essay, or like myself, I assign a lot of uh, reflections, they're able to kind of take this uh, to the next level and maybe integrate this as a break from them having to write so much. And students love this. We're meeting students where they already are at. Students are on social media. Students are creating this kind of content using podcasts and, and YouTube and so forth. So this is a really great space here for them to be able to, uh, for us as instructors to meet them where they're at. And here are a couple of examples of the social media posts that they create in another assignment later on down the road in the semester. And an example of uh, the, the video here that they use for that as well. Um, this is another student here. And as you can see, she's also using Adobe Spark, but her presentation is very, very different. Her colors are different. Her fonts are different. The way that she presents the exact same content that I asked for all my students, she presents it in a very different way here. So the aesthetic is gonna vary from student to student, but um, as the instructor, you're able to still go and grade and make sure that they have included all of the content that you asked them to and that they're presenting it in an aesthetic way. It gives them the uh, necessary skills also that they need whenever they leave your class to be able to apply the same sort of um, web page making skills to other types of work that they're doing in other classes or maybe in their professional um, situations. The great thing about Adobe is that many different professional institutions are using this. And so we're training our students to use the technology and tools that are being used out there in the professional world. And so we're trying to, to prepare them for what they're going to be encountering out there. So as you see, this is just a little bit of examples of how Spark is used in um, this particular capstone class. I also have another class that I teach, um, Media and Sexuality, and students are doing the exact same thing but they're using Spark web page as a way to present their critical cultural critiques over LGBTQ content in the media. I'm gonna be teaching a Selena class in the spring and we're gonna be using Spark web pages for students to be, uh, be able to present their reviews of different types of Latinx content as well as um, music and the concept of audiotopias as well. Great, Dr. Nate, I feel influencer ready. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it looks like, you know, I, I think we hear, hear a lot of people talk about Adobe and Spark is sort of like the gateway, the introduction. Um, it may look like it's, there's a lot to it, but Spark is structured in a way that it, it's really easy to use. So, um, Dr. Nate, would you be willing just to show a blank template just to see how um, folks could start to build it? 
Yes, I will do this relatively quickly. And, and um, one of the great things about Spark is that it is easy to use. Um, the great thing is that it already comes with pre-designed templates. It comes with um, different um, themes that you can choose from, or you can create your own brand. When you first log into Spark, um, you will have the options of using these kind of quick links here to create content. Um, as you will probably, if this is your first time using it, you will definitely not have these recent projects down here. As you can see, I've been designing different types of, of uh, Adobe Spark posts here as well. Um, and you can also create your own brand and I encourage students to create their own brand here too. So one of the great things about creating a brand is that you're able to create different types of logos or you can upload a logo if you have, you can create um, a color scheme, you can create a font scheme, and then you can then use that and apply it to every single thing you create in Spark. As you can see, or have, I have a different variety here of different um, brands that I have already created. So to create a web page, once you log on to Spark and you've logged on using your enterprise ID, um, for us, it's our SDSU ID, you will find this blue circle on the left and most of the web-based Adobe applications will have the same sort of interface where you find the circle with a plus and that's gonna mean that you add something. So when you click on it, it rotates, has a drop down. you click web page, and then it starts to um, pull up a blank slate for you. For those individuals maybe who be, may be nervous of creating web pages, because I was at first, I don't have that very in-depth knowledge of coding. This is a great place for you because basically you're clicking and adding stuff and it does the coding for you in the background. So it's a really great, as I mentioned before, gateway application for faculty and students alike to learn this relatively quickly. And you kind of just follow the steps that are here. This is grayed out at the top, this top menu until you start to create things. Right here on the right is where you find your themes. You can click here and toggle between the brands that you've created here and choose one of those brands. Or you can just scroll to the bottom and Adobe Spark has already created different themes for you on here. You can pick your theme now, or you can pick your theme after you've added content. It's not gonna erase the content that you have on here. So if you kind of wanna pick a theme and just start with that, one of the things you can do is um, after you've created the content, just go back to themes and change it to different themes and see which one you like best. Um, but you just kind of follow the prompts. Here it says add a title. So you click on there and you add a title of whatever that might be. You add um, the subtitle here. And then now when you uh, scroll down, you will see that this automatically pops up here. You can then start to add different types of content. This gray area here that's in the background, if you hit this little plus right here, it says photo. You can upload your own photo. You can find free photos. You can um, use Adobe Stock. For those of you that are at SDSU, we do have access to Adobe Stock because we have Adobe Creative Cloud portfolio of professional. Um, you can bring things over that you've stored in your Creative Cloud, bring things over from Lightroom. That's that synergy I was talking about earlier. Bring it over from your Dropbox, Google Photos, Google Drive. It makes everything very, very um, easy for you. So for the purpose of this, I'm just going to um, pull up a, a, the first picture that's on here just to kind of evidence what it might look like for you. Um, so once you've added that, you can add whatever you want back there. You can create a custom background in Photoshop or Lightroom and then bring that over as well. And then now you can start adding these different things. You can add different photos, you can add text, buttons, videos, photo grid, glide show, split layouts. And it's very, very easy to add. I mean, you just quick text and you type whatever the title is. You then highlight it and you're able to kind of change these presettings right here in terms of what that's gonna look like. Bulleted list, number list, making it bold. I mean, there's so much that you can do. Center align it, left align it, right align it. And you just keep adding all of this different content over and over again. Um, remember how I said that that window feature, that window orientation for the photo was one of my favorites. After you add a photo here, you're able to kind of choose, do you want it in line? Do you want it to fill the screen? There's that window option in the back where it kind of looks like it's just floating in the background. Do you want it the full width? There's just so many things um, I think that you're able to do with this. And as you scroll down, you see that there's these little circles with pluses. It just means that that's what you can click on to add different types of content. And as you scroll back up, you'll see that those little circles exist between elements. So you can go back and keep adding stuff on here in case um, that is what uh, you want to do. The video feature on here is relatively easy to use. 
Um, but one of the things too, is that there's like a give and take. It's so easy for you to go and get a YouTube video to put in here. You don't even need the embed code. All you need is a URL at the top of that YouTube page and you put it here and it automatically embeds that for you. The drawback is that because it's so easy to use, the only videos that you can embed here are from YouTube, Vimeo or Spark video. Those are the only three places you can get um, video from, but you're able to add that and it embeds it right there for you. And I'll give you a quick um, demonstration of that really quick. That way you can see not only what I'm listening to on my on my personal web YouTube page, but how easy it is Look, to transfer this over. You would just take the URL at the top. You would copy it over, take it back to your Spark, paste it here, hit save, and automatically it embeds that video for you. So, so easy um, for, for students and, and faculty alike because you got to teach this. So that's kind of the basics of this. You can create split layouts, add images on one side, add more content on the other side. As you've seen here from other students, this is the kind of content that they're using to create that. The different types of features here with the split layouts, with the photo grid and so forth. So you're able to create all that content right here and just build as you go. Publishing it is just as easy. You go here to share, you go to publish and share link, and you're able to title this. If you're using uh, photos that are part of Adobe stock or the free photos, it automatically uploads the photo credits for you. You can put your authorship on here, your picture, and then you create and publish the link and you're able to share that with the world. Um, and so that's kind of a quick overview, but we do have other tutorials available um, on the ITS site that kind of go more in depth on how to create these different pages. Yes, fantastic, Dr. A. I'd also like to just add, you can use this uh, collaboratively. And so you have the ability to add folks that you're working with, um, as Dr. Nate is showing you, you can add people. Um, it's really handy, really fun and very intuitive. Yes, you're very much correct. And one of the things that I forgot to mention, I think is also important is that Adobe Spark will automatically save in the background for you because it is a web-based application. Now that doesn't happen with Adobe's other applications that are not web-based, but it does happen with Portfolio. It does happen with Spark. It does happen with Behance. And so if you go back to the page without saving, you'll see now that that particular page that I'm working on is there. Um, and then to, to delete it or to edit it, you just hover over it, edit the project, or you can click these three little dots and hit delete. And it's just that easy. And then of course it asks, asks you a second time if you're sure, uh, because once you do delete it, that is uh, permanent there. So thank you so much for the opportunity to kind of go over Adobe Spark, Adobe Portfolio, and how I use it in uh, JMS Media Studies Capstone. Yes, thank you, Dr. Nate. And so now we'll go back in, in real time and do some Q&A. So we look forward to hearing from you. Thanks.